Welcome back to Screen Sleuths. I'm Rob, and I can now with full confidence say that it was not Tommy Malto. But let's dive into who it was from Presumed Innocent, Episode 8, The Verdict. We now have the full reveal of our season-long whodunit. This writing group and production team was very successful in creating a mystery that we as an audience had a very difficult time cracking. There were many who theorized about the possibility of the Savage children, but more specifically Kyle. But the reveal of Jaden was one that it seems the vast majority of fans did not see coming. So let's start with the logic that we used when dissecting the possible suspects. Motive, access to the Bunny Davis case, and a reason to forfeit the murder weapon at Tommy's. So, motive. That is now pretty clear. Jaden had full intentions to deliver a warning and try to separate Carolyn from her family. Once the likelihood of her being cut out entirely was gone, with the news of the pregnancy, she snapped. This moment of disassociation, which ultimately led to the attack, leads us to also what was one of, if not the only, clear-cut clue that it had been Jaden. The conversation that she had with Rusty about the ability of the human mind to compartmentalize traumatic events was not a clue for us that Rusty had done this when committing the murder. This was due to her researching the phenomenon because of her experience when she visited the Polima's house. Now, we here at Screen Sleuths would never advocate for violence or promote the idea of unaliving anyone, but... Carolyn also seems to not really have done herself any favors. Throughout the show, she doesn't exhibit many redeeming characteristics in the flashbacks, which in a way leaves us feeling somewhat sympathetic towards Jaden and the way events transpired as a fan group. So, no. Violence of any kind is never the answer. But also, Carolyn really sucks. So, now that we see why Jaden did it, why would she have tied her up in the manner of Bunny Davis? And how did she have access to the files? Well, she did. Rusty really followed up on our two-person theory. Rusty returns to Carolyn's house, most likely to try and continue to win her back. Instead, he finds her dead on the floor, and assuming he was covering for an angry Barbara, ties her up in a somewhat close recreation of the Bunny Davis case in an attempt to frame Liam Reynolds and then ultimately later on have him admit to a crime that he didn't commit in exchange for a shortened sentence. This does really make the most sense for the crime scene staging just because with Reynolds in prison the people who would have been able to memorize the scene enough by this point really would have just been Carolyn or Rusty. So the idea that the wild and unplanned attack was followed by a meticulous staging from two people really does make the most sense as we're looking back. Now, lastly, reasoning to plant the fire poker at Tommy's. After her father's testimony, Jaden feared the worst and assumed that Tommy having the weapon would take the heat off of Rusty. This part ultimately does nothing other than keep the poker from being entered into evidence due to the very odd nature of how it showed up. But it would not have been used in evidence otherwise, had it not been discovered. So, while the logic being used to narrow down the suspects was a key piece for us last week, it ended up being rather insignificant for us as an audience identifying the killer. So, we see the side of Rusty that is relieved he was found not guilty, but yet he still accomplice to the crime a realization that looking back on the show holds up, as he never denies having nothing to do with the scene, but only ever denied the murder itself. Jaden had been in front of us at all times throughout the show, appearing a bit off to the side, or strictly as a concerned daughter. But we now know this concern was more about the possibility of her father going to prison for a crime that she herself committed. Okay, so remember... We are going to be getting a Season 2 of Presumed Innocent, 
So be on the lookout in the future for more clue hunting from the screen sleuths when that time comes around. Who knows? Maybe we'll get Tomasino and his bolo tie hot on someone else's tail. As always, if you're a fan of what we're doing here at the channel, please be sure to like and subscribe to let the algorithm, the ultimate judge, know that we're on the right track. Also, check out Chris's coverage of Sunny starring Rashida Jones. Until our next video, stay sleuthy.